I'm here at Atlanta at Ignite 2016, great conference, and I have a guest, uh, Jeffrey Snover, the father of PowerShell and lead architect of Windows Server System Center and Azure Stack, right? Exactly correct. Yep. So, Jeff, you have had some great announcement at Ignite. Uh, all of your babies are, oh, nearly all, System Center and Windows Server are GA now. Yes. Uh, Windows 2016, and there was an, is a new technical preview of Azure Stack. Correct, TP2. So, TP2. TP2. So, uh, please give us maybe a 10,000 foot overview. What's so great in all this stuff and how it comes together? And PowerShell is also great, you know. Yeah. So, please go on. Yeah, so let's see. So Windows Server 2016, that's an amazing release, right? It's really the largest architectural changes that we've made to the server since really the, the beginning, since NT4.0. Right, we've dramatically refactored it, and so we have nano server, right? Server in a desktop, that's about 10 gigabytes. Server core um, is about five gigabytes. Oh, that's great. Nano server is about 480 megabytes, megabytes. It's amazingly small. And then you add the things that you need, okay? Uh, we've also uh, introduced new architectures to better facilitate the DevOps workflow. So basically, Windows Server 2016 continues to be an awesome server for the way you used to do things. If you have a single machine that you walk up to and have a keyboard and a mouse and you manage that single server, it's great for that. If you have an enterprise server where you put Active Directory on it, it's great for that. If you want to put it in data centers and manage everything and find control everything, it's great for that. But what the new scenario that we've added is this cloud model. So we've got application models for the cloud, DevOps models for the cloud, uh, reconfigured the OS for the cloud. It's a, it's just an awesome release. And there are containers involved there. That's also a great thing with Docker. I, I was just in a Docker session, Docker and Windows Server container session. Great stuff. What, what is a container, Jeffrey? Yeah. So uh, a container is basically. Uh, the way I like to think of it is, a bunch of the steps that used to be done in the traditional model, a developer would release code, he'd give it to someone, that someone would put it on an operating system, they put all the dependencies together and configure it, and maybe they get it right, and maybe they wouldn't, they have to go back and forth, back and forth. Well, a bunch of the steps that the operator do, used to do, now are done by the developer in the build lab. So as part of the build, you no longer just produce the XE, you produce the XE, you capture all the uh, dependencies, you capture the configuration, and then you think of it as like a differencing disk. Yeah. You know, it's a differencing disk with files, uh, and then you just hand that differencing disk and then puts it on top of a reference uh, OS and run from there. So it really helps with microservices. So again, microservices, the, the big picture here is that we're flipping the model on its head. So if you think about it, in the past, if you think about it, in the past, uh, we used to have, uh, you know, spend a lot of money on a server, yeah. and the server was the focus of our attention. Yeah. We go and we'd say, hey, I want to get as much value out of that expensive server as I can, so I'm going to hire a great guy like you to go manage it, and I'm going to put as many applications as I can have on it, and because they're all running on the same thing, you have this environmental coupling, and all sorts of things go south from there. And then that led to a bunch of IT practices about don't change things, don't change things, don't change things. Now we're flipping the model on the head because servers are inexpensive, virtual servers are even more inexpensive, cloud servers are downright cheap. And so now the model is, the thing that matters is the application. And so what do you do? You say, well the application's what matters, that's the thing I'm going to focus in on. The operating system should only do what's necessary to support that application. If it's not supporting that application, it shouldn't be there. Okay. Okay. Containers, it's all about the application. The application is the key. And if you think about the DevOps stuff that we've done, so desired state configuration, uh, operational validation testing, um, uh, things like that, uh, just enough operations, it's all uh, producing an application-centric environment. Uh, so that's the big shift. I learned a container is uh, very movable, so you can move a container to Azure in a, in a, in a, on, based on Windows Server 2016, for example. You can move it to uh, AWS, you can move it on-premise. So you have your application going with you, and that's not possible today so easy because a container is very small. A virtual machine, for example, is much bigger, and uh, you can do a lot of containers in, in one virtual machine or even on hardware, right? Yeah, that's exactly right, because the, the thing that you're moving is only the differences from some reference image. Yeah. 
So when we look up now to Azure and uh, um, you have another great stuff that is uh, running in Azure or Azure based on uh, iLearn, the operating system Azure is based on is a very small one, right? Yeah. What is it? Uh, so they're currently Azure is using uh, 2012 R2, uh, the core edition. Um, but they will in the future use Nano Server, I guess, because Nano is uh, for the cloud, right? Yeah, that's where we're headed towards, right? And uh, the question is when, et cetera. But all, everything, here's the model. Basically, going forward, everything in server is going to be based upon Nano Server, yeah. right? We're going to refactor everything to work on that. And that'll take a couple of releases, but that's where we're going. Yeah. So we have Nano Server, it's also great for con. By the way, because the thing is, you know, in addition to it being an application centric view, um, it reduces the resources, which yeah. means there's more resources for the uh, uh, application. It reduces the security attack footprint yeah. and the servicing footprint. You know, I mean, for me, it always was seemed. Uh, uh, it's one thing to say, well, I'm using this component, and that component needs to be patched, and therefore I need to take a reboot. Like, okay, that's the deal. You know, you get value from that component. That's that's what it costs you. But to have some component in your operating system that you're not there, that you're not using, and it needs a patch and therefore causes a reboot, to me, that just seemed like the, the epitome of injustice. I mean, yeah. just like almost morally wrong. And so with this model of like, hey, we're going to start small and then add the things you want. Now look, at the end of the day, it might be that you need four or five gigabytes worth of stuff to support your application. But that's because it's helping your application. That's fine. Yeah. Um, but uh, in general, you don't need that much. So when we look at Azure, there will be a great offering uh, for my data center or on-premise. You have the great public cloud with Azure. You have all the new application APIs there. You have ARM with ARM templates. It's like DSC, the new world. But I can get that also in my data center in the future, right? And you are also involved in that. Exactly, right. So I'm leading the architecture for Azure Stack. Yeah. So Azure Stack's where we take the power of Azure and run it in your data center on new integrated system offering that we're actually showing right over here. That's why we're sending you, right? Exactly. The logo Azure Stack. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so the, uh, the the point of that is we, you know, it's not all of Azure, right? Azure has content distribution networks. You know, we're not putting that on your data center. Uh, but what, what Resinovich and I did was we sit down and defined the core subset of components, the most frequently used APIs and services that help people build uh, cloud applications and take existing stuff and run them on the cloud. Then we'll deliver that, and then we'll go figure out the next set of scenarios that we want to support and figure out what APIs and services are required to that. So it'll be an ever-expanding group of, of uh, services. For an ISV who is develop, developing applications for Azure, they can all these applications then also can run in a private cloud. If the customer wants some private cloud or has to use it, it the application can run there, maybe in a container, maybe on a, a native, and it can run in Azure. That's a great story, isn't it? Yeah, essentially that's the heart of it, right? We're a platform company. So what does a platform company do? A platform company says, hey, I'm going to deliver a set of services so that developers can do their best work at the lowest possible cost. Additionally, when they deliver something, it's available on the widest number of environments. And in doing so for developer community, we then turn to the consumers and say, hey, as consumers, you now have the widest range of things you can choose from to get exactly what you want. So Azure is what happens when a platform company builds a platform for the cloud. And everything is be manageable or uh, you can create it with PowerShell. So now we have the whole circle of your babies, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, you know, if you take a look, uh, anybody doing anything with data centers or the cloud are doing it with PowerShell today, yeah. right? So VMware, all PowerShell. Uh, AWS, Azure, even now Google is just released commandlets. So yeah, and now that PowerShell is available on Linux, yeah. you know PowerShell is emerging as really the technology to manage your hybrid cloud. You can now manage from any client, managing any server on any cloud with the same stack. I don't know if you get it wrong, but uh, right, but it's also available on Apple, right? Yeah, PowerShell. So PowerShell everywhere. Yeah. You want you want it. <laughs>
Exactly. Okay, Jeffrey, great interview. I like it. Great overview. And I, I think the IT pros uh, have to learn the new world. There's a lot of great new stuff, and you have to. To, to get your head around it. What would be a, a good resource to start with? Yeah, well, I will say it is a time of great change, uh, but you know, as IT pros, that's what we signed up for. Yeah. You know, I like to tell yeah. the story that, uh, you know, my buddies in lumber, no, no new trees for the last uh, few years. But as IT pros, we have to constantly learn. So there's lots of the great resources. Uh, certainly with PowerShell, it's now available open sourced yeah. and available on GitHub. And on GitHub, the README has a pointer to a, 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 a best places to learn stuff. In terms of Azure Stack, I think it's we have URLs for them, but I can't remember them. But you know, they are the, in Azure. It's, uh, it's great. Yeah. yeah. So and in, in in the MBA, there are some really good uh, courses. You did some great uh, uh, video courses there with other people. So maybe go there and uh, start to learn the new world, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for the interview, Jeffrey.